Hello, welcome to uh, episode 26 of Mouth Dancing. Actually, episode 25. Jump the gun there a little bit. It's only 25. Still a lot of episodes, though. It's um, it's a quarter of a hundred. I'm a fourth of the way there. So if I do this three more times, that's a hundred. For those of you who suck at math, probably most of you do if you're listening to this podcast. Do you ever hear people talking about how cute a baby is? Like, oh my god, look at that baby, it's so cute. Oh. And they, they freak out over it, and they pinch its cheeks. Or they, I don't know, they just look at it and they're fawning over it. Most of the time when someone thinks a baby is cute, it's a, it generally resembles themselves, I think. Like, white people are generally going to think white babies are the cutest. Like, oh, look at its blue eyes. And then that person, of course, is going to have blue eyes, generally speaking. I don't know. I think people are just generally attracted to people who look like themselves. But anyway, that's not what I, that's not the point I wanted to make. But they talk about how cute this baby is. Or, you know, even sometimes they'll talk about how ugly a baby is. You know, they'll look at someone's baby. They won't say it to the person's face usually. They won't say, oh, you have an ugly baby, but later when they're away from that person and they're talking with someone else, they'll be like, oh my god, did you did you think that baby was kind of ugly? And everyone will be like, yeah, that was an ugly baby. But it doesn't, does it even really matter what, what someone looks like as a baby? Because some really cute babies turn into really hideous adults. And then some ugly babies grow up to be really attractive looking. But of course some cute babies become cute when they're older too. And, you know, vice versa. But I mean, my point basically is it doesn't really matter if it's a baby is cute or ugly, right? I guess it matters while they're a baby. But babies are pretty useless anyway, so it's not like their looks are going to get them anywhere really, right? Except maybe if you have a, I don't know, if you're cuter, you'll probably get treated better by people. But that's not necessarily a good thing either because then you just might get spoiled and have like a sort of prince or a princess sort of a personality, you know? So maybe it's actually good to be an ugly baby that grows up to be a good looking person. Because then you're not used to like getting treated really royally all the time. So you're uh, prepared for like the hardships of life and rejections and failures and things like that. But then you end up being good looking when you're older and that, you know, you get the advantages of of that without being a, a spoiled little bitch, you know? So all this talk about babies and how cute they are and all that, I don't know. I don't, I don't really pay it much heed. I think it can just pretty much be disregarded by everyone. The only people it matters to, I guess, are the parents. If they want to look at a cute baby all the time while they're raising it. It's probably better than looking at an ugly baby all the time. But then again, if you're the parents, even if your baby's ugly, you're probably going to be blind to that fact because... It's your baby, so you're going to love it, right? And you're going to think it's really cute, even if it's not. Like there's that expression, like a face that only a mother could love. You know, that's that expression exists because there are lots of ugly babies and ugly people out there whose mothers don't even notice that. They just think, oh, my ugly son or daughter is the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. I guess there are some parents who think their children are ugly. And they even say it, right? They abuse their kids and say, you're an ugly kid. But I think that's pretty rare. Generally, people are delusional about the way they look. 
and they think that if their baby probably resembles them and they think, oh, well, if it resembles me, then it's good looking because I'm good looking. I guess there are some people who have bad self-esteem and not much confidence, but they're pretty few and far between. That's why you have a lot of really entitled people in America like Karens, you know? What's the male version of a Karen? I thought Greg would be a good name for that type of person, for the male version. Kind of sexist if you think about it that we only talk about Karens because there are just as many um, entitled dudes like that. There are probably actually even more dudes like that. If you've ever worked in customer service, you've probably dealt with these types of dudes before. Who are like, oh, uh, I could easily do this, or do you know how much money I spend here? It's always that customer who's talking about how much money they spend in the place, as if that matters. So you are you supposed to get like special treatment because of that? That sounds pretty like a corrupt way of thinking, dude. And they're probably also like, this is America. Well, America is not supposed to be like that, right? It's not supposed to be all corrupt like that, like, like you're bribing people. They probably also go around saying, this isn't China. If you don't like it, go back to China. But then they're acting like this corrupt person that they're criticizing, you know, this country that they're criticizing. They act like, they're acting like the corrupt people from there. That doesn't really make much sense, does it? It's like they got their entire ass on backwards and they got their head up their ass too at the same time. It's like they got their head up their ass and they're munching on their own shit. Like it's um like a normal meal that you eat. But I think most people wouldn't want to eat shit because that's waste matter. It's like the stuff that your body produces after you've digested all your food. And it's like the stuff that has pretty much no nutrients or any kind of use for your body. And your body is just like expelling it through your intestines and out your butthole. Into the toilet as shit. No one wants to eat that because it's waste. That's why they call it feces. You know, they, call it, they call it feces for a reason. Right? And they call it urine for a reason too. Because it's waste. It's not like you're going to drink your urine. Remember when Ma Madonna said that she likes to wash her feet with her pee? Does that mean she pees in the shower and then she like pees on her, pees on her own feet? And she's like, oh, my feet are all clean now. Because I peed on them. I've also heard of people who think that they don't need to wash their legs in the shower. Because the water and soap is running down your body and then it's just cleaning it as that happens. But I don't think that really works. If that were the case, then you could just clean your car by driving it in the rain, right? And the water running down would clean it. I don't think that really works, though, because there's not enough. There's, there's no soap, for one. And there's no scrubbing motion. Like, rain is not going to get mud off of your car if it's really, you know, caked and baked on there. You could get some of it off, but... Uh, even then, it's like, I bet you there will be a residue left behind. Do you think Madonna's feet have turned yellow now because she pees on them all the time? I haven't seen Madonna's feet in a long time, come to think of it. But I haven't really heard of much from Madonna either in a long time. She used to be on TV constantly, it seemed like. From the 80s all the way through the 2000s, it seemed like she was constantly on TV or making a song or in a movie but lately I haven't really heard from her what is she doing these days remember that song Ray of Light where she talked about being like a Zephyr in the sky or like a Ray of Light that was kinda weird it was like Techno Madonna I don't know how I feel about Techno Madonna I liked it more when she sang about being on the borderline 
or lucky stars. You could be my lucky star or being like a virgin or like a prayer. A lot of her songs are about being like something, you know, like a prayer or like a virgin or like a zephyr in the sky or like a lucky star or like being on a borderline of love. It's weird to think of love as having like a borderline. Do you have to have a passport to get past it? Is there like a customs agent there checking your love luggage or something? Like, sir, you can't, you can't enter the, the love territory with this not permitted here. And it's like a bag of Cheetos. Well, what, why can't you bring Cheetos into the love land? Why is it, why are they banned? Do they promote hate or something? Like, or maybe they're not very romantic. If you brought Cheetos to a love country, people would probably think it's kind of a cheap gift or, not very, no, it doesn't induce love. Probably want to eat a more erotic snack than that, right? Like chocolate. Something about chocolate is very um, sexual, isn't it? It's kind of weird though. Cause every, when I eat chocolate, I'm not always in a sexual mood or something, you know? Sometimes I just feel like eating chocolate because it tastes good. But there's sort of like this obligation if you eat chocolate to be like horny and like romantic. But not every day is Valentine's Day, you know. Sometimes you just feel like eating a Twix or something or um, a Hershey's Kiss. So even the candy has like sort of a, a love theme to it. Why is it called a kiss? It doesn't look like a kiss. It looks like... um. It almost looks like a little turd, actually. Maybe they didn't want to call it Hershey's Turds, you know, because that wouldn't be very good marketing. So they had to come up with something, right? So they called it a kiss. It's just like this little turd of chocolate that they wrap foil around. It's kind of weird, too, that they're individually wrapped in foil. It's extremely wasteful. I don't want to have to like unwrap each one just to eat one. That's stupid. Do they have Hershey's Kisses that aren't individually wrapped like that? I bet that would be a pretty good um, product. I think I would buy that. Feels like um, fall's just around the corner, doesn't it? Air's getting a little bit nippy. Football games on again. Football's back. That's always something that seems like a fall thing, right? I guess baseball season's winding down, which also means it's fall. Because playoffs are coming. Then the the World Series. Baseball's like a summer sport, but it ends in fall. And football's like a fall sport, but it ends in winter. And I'm not sure about basketball. When does basketball season begin and end? But it's basically all designed so that there's sports year-round, right? So there's never much of a gap between sports so that people are constantly tuned into sports. It's kind of a conspiracy, actually, to make us addicted to sports. Some people really are addicted, though. It's like um, it's almost like it's opium for them or like heroin, and they have to inject it in their veins all the time. And they get it delivered to them through uh, television, right? Or the internet. Or even the radio. Or their, or an app on their smartphone. They're just mainlining sports all the time. And Have you ever met one of those people who's really into sports and they have all the trivia memorized? Those dudes are kind of crazy. It's like they have a sense of superiority from knowing a lot about sports stuff. Like, do they remember what happened in 1968 in game 12 of the Stanley Cup or whatever? And then, if you don't know it, they kind of, like, scoff at you. Like, what a what a poser. This guy doesn't really like sports. I wonder what they do, like, read sports encyclopedias all day and, like, Wikipedia articles. Those guys are kind of weird. 
But they don't have as much of a stigma as like comic book people for some reason, right? Like a guy who knows all that nerdy sports stuff doesn't have as much of a nerdy image as like someone who's into video games and comic books. But maybe that's changed these days because a lot of the younger generation, like it's normal to be into video games and and comics and anime and stuff like that. But it, that, it's used to be like that, which is kind of weird because sports people, in my opinion, are just as nerdy. A lot of them don't actually play sports. They just watch them. I mean, watching sports doesn't make you macho because you're not actually doing it. You're just watching other people do it and sort of living vicariously through them. So that actually makes you a huge nerd. But somehow sports fans get this image of being sort of manly, which doesn't really make sense to me. Anyway, this episode was kind of weird, wasn't it? It's kind of like sort of bitter and angry sounding. I hope it, did, I hope it didn't come off that way. I hope it sounded a little bit funny at times or amusing. And I hope you at least chuckled at least once or twice. And if you didn't, um, you can go fuck yourself. Just kidding. That's not, that's not what I would say. I would say, I'm sorry to have disappointed you and I hope next time I can do better and I hope you come back and give me another chance. Or maybe actually something in between those two things. Because the first one just sounds kind of like asshole-ish and then the second one sounds too um, ass-kissy. Which is not good either. You don't want to be a total fuckhead or a total doormat, you know. You gotta be somewhere... You gotta have a nice balance between the two. And... Enjoy the winter weather. It's um, going to harden your nipples because you're probably not used to it. You're used to the warm the warm weather, which doesn't harden your nipples usually, unless um, a really cold breeze comes and just hits you right on your chest. And then it, it presses your shirt against you really hard and you might your nipples might protrude, you know? But generally it doesn't happen as much in the summertime, unless maybe you've been swimming in cold water. It's more of like a fall and winter type of thing. But may the fall breezes and winter breezes harden your nipples. And hopefully not chap your lips, so put some chapstick on or some other kind of lip balm. And thank you for tuning in. And have fun out there. And enjoy, you know, sports year-round. And enjoy yourself as well. Enjoy your body and your mind and, and um, play with yourself. Not necessarily sexually, but just as recreation. Play with yourself and play with others as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.